Number two, a madman. Crazy man. Number three, a person that no messenger came in his time. And number four, a very old man who became Sina. Allah will command a tongue. Listen to the saying of Prophet. Allah will command a tongue to come up from the fire. From the fire, Allah command out a tongue will appear. And will then tell them, this whole group of people, I used to send to my servant messengers from among themselves and indeed I am now my own messenger to you. The tongue will say to them, I used to send my servants messenger from among themselves and I indeed am now my own messenger to you. The tongue is representing Allah Himself. And the tongue will say to them, Enter this fire. Come. Come to the fire. As for those who will be destined to misery, they will say, Oh my Lord, why should we enter this from which we always used to run away? How can we go to hell? We do not want to go to hell. We never ask for help. We want to go to paradise. Allah will then tell them, if you dare to disobey me now, you would then show even more denial and disobedience to my messengers. And as for those who will be destined to be happy, to happiness, they will go forth and rush to enter that fire. Because it's a command from come to me. They will just go. Then they will enter Jannah. That hell actually is Allah Jannah. It's Allah test upon them. You said nobody call you. Now I'm calling you now. To see whether you respond to my call, you obey my command or not. Of course, if Allah will test us, come to paradise. Of course, you will jump into paradise. Then there's no trouble. There's no test. But Allah is going to test in a different way. Now this should teach us not to pinpoint number one because this is real. Is uh, you can get it yeah, in the book recorded by Abu Ya'la al-Baghawi and also is certified authentic by Shaykh al-Bani rahimahullah alayhi. This hadith should teach us not to pinpoint at any disbeliever in his life and say that he or she will definitely end up in hellfire because he is a disbeliever. We do not know. First of all, we do not know what their fate will be at the time of death. They may, can, they may repent. There is a story we know about in the time of the Prophet, he was informed by, by the angel that there is a man who has killed 99 lives and complete 100 because when he wanted to repent after killing 99 people he went to met a rabbi, a priest and asked him I want to stop killing, can God forgive me? I want to repent he said no okay, he said no, so I'll kill you and make you 100 so it make it easy for me to remember and then he went over to look for a pious guy to show him how can he repent? And he said, Allah is always forgiving. He accepts all repentance that is sincere. And because of his sincerity, the last minute of his life, he died while he was on his way to repentance, and Allah forgave his sin and entered him to paradise. Not now, in the day of judgment. So we do not know. Secondly, we usually cannot be sure that they have received the message in its true form and then rejected. We have no right to say to them, you know about Islam, I talk to you about Islam, but what kind of Islam do you, you talk to them? 
what kind of Islam is the Muslim today in this country sharing with their non-Muslim partner? If your traditional Islam, people don't like your tradition. Is your own understanding of Islam is the racist Islam, people don't need this racist Islam. And that's why when I was in Japan, I talked to the Muslim from Egypt, from Turkey, from Bangladesh, from Indonesia, from Malaysia, from Pakistan, all the different ethnic groups in Japan. I said, please do not bring your culture to Japan. If you promote your culture, you fail the Japanese people. Because the Japanese culture is better than all our culture. They are more disciplined, they are more clean, they are more hardworking, they are very committed. We don't have that. You don't have that. Our country someday is dirty. When you put the sidewalk, don't litter here. They will litter there. <laughs> just the opposite. You saw that. Don't litter here. They will just purposely litter in that place. You don't really understand what, what these people understand in the world. I think you must say, litter here. They don't litter there. <laughs> but there's no way you put litter, they will litter more. So how can you discipline this Ummah? But you don't have this problem in Japan. I share with you again because there are some new brother and sister with me today. When I was in one of the mosques, I was making my wudu, suddenly I saw a wash. Somebody must have left it. Quickly I take it and pass it to the, to the mosque authority. They said, where do you find this? I said, near the wudu area. Please go and send it back and put it there. Because here anything, we will never take and the owner will come back and look for it. Nobody will steal. People will come to the mosque, they really come to pray, they don't come and steal. And then one Japanese family came to me and said, Sheikh, I just came back from Malaysia, so I went for the Juma prayer. After Juma, I lost my shoes. <laughs> and this is a Muslim country. And that is a Japanese Shinto country. What can I say? I just smile at that. I say, maybe you make the wrong plan. You know, when you want to go to mosque, you must plan how to put your shoes. One side here, one side here. <laughs> well, I used to have slippers. You know? Even slippers, I put both you know, in the different side. So I'm sure. And that's why you see when you go to Mecca, Alhamdulillah, the most sacred mosque on earth, Mecca. When you perform one prayer, you get a reward of 100,000 reward. And they still allow you to bring your slipper, your sandal, and put in front of you to perform your prayer. Or beside why? They want you to pray with peace. That is tawakal. That is tawakal. You plan. You plan, you don't put your shoes behind and then go and pray and after that you're on the way out, you lost it. Then you want to curse somebody, you blame somebody, you cannot blame them. There are hundred thousand of people. Maybe they, they, they also forget their own shoes. That's the best feeling you should have. Maybe they forget. Which people do I use this now? So anything look like the same and how they like this and that. So even you make tawa, don't put your sandal in there, make travel with your shoe. Keep in the plastic and walk with it. nothing. In this country, you do that, they throw you out. You say, what kind of person you are you coming to the mosque with you? Our, is our mosque more sacred than Mecca? No. This is an example. This is very important, brothers and sisters. Now this understanding to know that only Allah has the final say will give us a more positive attitude when dealing with not yet Muslim around us. Because every one of them could potentially be our neighbor in Jannah. May Allah admit us into it with His mercy and generosity. Amen. Hello brothers and sisters again. Because last week we talked about intercession. So it's important for me to share with you something 
they have to do with the day of judgment. That is the day that everybody is waiting to go. Everything, everyone will experience the same thing today. Now, number one, we must remember whatever that we have done in this world, we have witnesses. Number one is the angels. There will be a testimony of the angels in the day of judgment. Like what Allah said in Surah Al-Intiqar, verses 10 to verses 12. وَإِنَّ عَلَيْكُمْ لَحَافِظِينَ كِرَامًا كَادِلِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ مَا تَعْلُونَ Surely there are angels appointed over you to wash you. They are honorable recorders. They don't sleep. You cannot corrupt them. They don't favor or take side. They are just honorable recorders. They know all that you do. And Allah said again in Surah Qaf verses 17 and 18, إِذْ يَتَلَقَّ الْمُتَلَقِّيَانِ عَنِ الْيَمِينِ وَعَنْ شِمَالِ قَعِيدِ مَا يَلْفِذُ مِنْ قَوْلِ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَدِيدٌ رَقِيبٌ عَدِيدٌ We know when the two receiving angels write, seated on the right and on the left, he, the person, does not utter one word but what? that with him is an observer ready to record it. Raqibun wa'atid. There is the first testimony from the angels. Testimony, testimony from ourselves, from the body. A person's limbs and other past body parts will also testify against him on the day of judgment. Anas radiallahu anhu reported that once the Prophet sallallahu smiled and then asked his companion, Do you know why I smile? They replied that they did not. So he sallallahu alayhi wa told them the meaning of this hadith, I smile at the way a servant would argue with Allah in the day of judgment. The Prophet just smiled when Allah informed him to angel Gabriel that what is going to happen in the Day of Judgment. There are people who will argue with Allah by saying, My Lord, have you not promised that I will see no injustice on this day? We are going to say to Allah, My Allah, have you not promised that I will see no injustice on this day? The day of judgment. Allah will answer, yes, indeed, I promise you. The final day of judgment, Yawun Al-Qiyamah, Yawun is sure to take place. Then the servant will say, I do not then accept any witness against me except from my own. We are going to say to Allah, I will do not then accept any witness against me except from my own. We don't need any witness. I become my own witness. Allah will say to him, sufficient is yourself against you. This day,